tell you the other thing I wanted to mention. This, this, uh, this is going to be a little quick bonus for you, and then my message will be after this. Um, you'll see my little Star Wars scene with the Star Wars kid doing some acrobatic stuff. But then you got to listen to what these pastors and preachers. I said there's wolves and sheep's clothing everywhere. These pastors and preachers are thinking they're whatever. They're pretending to be wizards on stage. You got to check it out. Bethel Church. There it is. All right, guys. How's it going? see what's on YouTube today. Apostles have authority to make the decrees and declaration and um, so why don't you share your vision then we'll do the apostolic decree. Come in. Okay so I am an artist. Is she dressed like a wizard? One of the movies that has really touched my heart is Lord of the Rings. She's for real dressed like a wizard. If you know Lord of the Rings, everybody understands what's in my hand. <laughs> what is happening? Just opening his arms. Opening his arms. Is this lady drunk? And I heard myself speak why he asked me to do that. Normally, it would only be scriptures. Am I drunk? But the Lord told me I needed to repent for the participation I had with the racist spirit. Oh, I think the spirit's done left this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask us right now to all grab a hold of this in our hand. Please don't do what I think you're about to do. We are going to lift the staff and we will command the spirit not only to leave. Rebecca, did you put LSD in my coffee again? No more. No more. No more. Well, two things. I think it's important for you to share the vision of Gandalf yes. putting oh. the stake down because that, oh, that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I've been to PTA meetings that were less awkward than that. We decree and declare that racism will end. It's over in the ecclesia from this night forward. <laughs> Gandalf. It's something up and bang it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise over. Gandalf, what you doing? Repeat with us. Thou shall not pass. Congratulations, guys. You fixed it. All those racist groups are just running through their lives. They heard about your little staff deal and they're just they just said, you know what, we're done. They're right. I'm sorry, we did it twice. We need one more. Yeah, one more. We need you to agree with us. Yeah, what's another one going to hurt? I mean, you know, it's already the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. One, 
On this channel, we have tried to define a modernist for you, someone who uses unorthodox methods and has unorthodox viewpoints on major theological issues. And that's basically what we've defined a modernist to be. But what do you call a group of people that go beyond that? They are not just using worldly methods. They're actually using wicked methods and wicked means to the point where they're actually practicing black magic rituals on stage in front of everybody and they're not even trying to hide it. They're saying that's what we're doing and they're doing it in Jesus' name. What do you call people like that? Well, I call them Bethel Church. Hey guys, your friend Spencer here. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Bethel Church is just the gift that keeps on giving. On June 12th of this year, Bethel Church hosted an event called Transformation Now, where at the very end, they tried to imitate a scene from the Lord of the Rings and do it in Jesus' name. Now, for those of you who've been living under a rock for the past 20 years, and that's really not a bad thing at this point, those who are living under a rock probably are doing better than all of us. Lord of the Rings is probably one of the most popular and most successful movie franchises of all time. Now, in the very first Lord of the Rings movie, there was a scene where Gandalf and a few other people, there's Gandalf the wizard, are running from a large demon creature in an underground cave. And uh, this demon creature is called a Balrog. And uh, he is right there, a big menacing looking guy, pretty dangerous little fella. And Gandalf is the great wizard, and he has to stand off against this great demon. And uh, they run, and let me just fast forward it for you a little bit. They run over this tiny little bridge that you see there. And as they're running away, Gandalf stops and makes his final stand against this creature. And this is basically what happens. Wait, I'm, I'm, that looked real familiar. That looked like a Hillsong person when you tell them that what they do is not in line with the Bible. Oh my goodness, are you judging me? Some big magic battle there, and this is what Gandalf does. He blocks a big sword blow, and then here's the famous line from the Lord of the Rings that... This is part of their epic magic. And I have mixed emotions about this scene because it always, for some reason, reminds me of a certain Bible teacher that I had in Bible college. I promise you, I'm not bitter. I am not bitter. It's been 15 years. I promise you, I'm not bitter. But this scene in The Lord of the Rings has basically become a meme. It's become famous, and it just is something so popular in culture today. And so Bethel Church decides, you know, that's a good idea. This black magic spell that was cast against a demon in a occult-ridden movie is something that we're going to do in Jesus' name. This is par for the course for modern Christianity. This is why I wrote my book, Calling Evil Good, The Live Christian Rock and Roll. This is what we're facing today. People are calling evil good and calling good evil. Everything's backwards today. And even the churches of today, the, the people that are supposed to be the holy people of God, are actually practicing black magic and witchcraft in front of everyone. And just to show you what they're doing, let me just let's just watch the video. You know, we're going to do some binding and loosening. And one of the things that I've learned in the last maybe around 10 years, that apostles have authority to make the decrees and declaration. And um, it's something that God gives. And I've seen it work in so many practical ways. Well, Pastor Marlene got a prophetic vision right before this event. And she saw us doing a prophetic act that was going to be very, very historic. So thank you for hanging in there and staying with us. But I believe that this is a very crucial time. So why don't you share your vision that we'll do the apostolic decree. 
And so she goes through and she explains, you know, I love the Lord of the Rings, and you saw some of that just a few minutes ago. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing that Gandalf did against that demon. We're going to do the same exact you shall not pass ritual to the spirit of racism in the modern day ecclesia or the church. And so you see them all getting up here and uh, they fumble the delivery of this. I mean, this is this. I've been to Cub Scout meetings that were more well planned and organized than this. And so they go through and do the most awkward, crazy little thing here. And you shall not pass. And they slam that staff just like they did in the Lord of the Rings in that scene right there. And here we go. Yeah, from this night forward, in Jesus' mighty name, the step up and bang it. <laughs> Hallelujah! Come on, give him a praise over. And uh, as now the jury's still out, but I, I, I'm going to just go out on a limb and say that it is possible that racism still exists. I, I may be crazy. The presidential candidates were asked, do black lives matter or do all lives matter? Take a look at their responses. Yeah. Do black lives matter or do all lives matter? Let's put that question to Senator Sanders. Black lives matter. And the reason, the reason those words matter is the African-American community knows that on any given day, some innocent person like Sandra Bland can get into a car and then three days later she's going to end up dead in jail. The point that the Black Lives Matter movement is making is a very, very legitimate and serious point. And that is that as a nation, we have undervalued the lives of black lives, people of color. We need a new New Deal for communities of color. Senator Webb. Now, you may remember that Governor O'Malley got booed when he actually said that all lives matter, and then later he ended up apologizing. Watch this. Every life matters. And that is why this issue is so important. Black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. Out of the candidates who answered that question, only former Virginia Senator Jim Webb said that all lives matter. Joining us now with reaction, Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, CRN KRLA radio host Larry Elder, and Fox News political analyst Juan Williams. Hey, Sheriff, I'm having a hard time with this. Um, white lives matter, <laughs> black lives matter, Asian lives matter, Hispanic lives matter, blue lives matter. What, what is so controversial about saying all lives matter? And what does it say when somebody won't say that? <laughs> Sean, it was a pathetic display. It was plantation politics in its finest hour, the continued enslavement of black people emotionally by the Democrat Party with this destructive liberal ideology. And they know it. They're whoring for votes. They know that's what they're doing. The liberal ideology has been very destructive for the black community for the last 50 or 60 years. Poverty is now generational. It's a lifestyle. The unemployment is obscene. They have to send their kids to failing public schools, drug and alcohol addiction, neighborhoods that are crumbling, all under Democrat control. They need to get off their knees and stop this stuff and take a real message to the American people, and especially the black community, that what they have done, they deserve an apology for from the Democrat Party. Now remember Minneapolis, the Black Lives Matter movement, were chanting pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. Remember this. Pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. Pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. Democrats meeting sucking sure. up to this group. I don't think they're sucking up to them, but I will say that it's, to me, pandering when you can't say all lives matter. But the reason for it is purely political. There is a real issue of excessive use of police force in the country. Black Lives Matter no, has isn't. come in response to that issue. And so no, what you get isn't. is Democratic politicians. Wait, wait, Sheriff, Sheriff Clark is talking to you. Well, no, he says no, it isn't. I mean, there's, still, there's no argument that clearly well, there's an no, issue. There is if an you argument. have Michael Brown, if you have Eric Garner, <laughs> if you could go on and on. But I just want to say you guys have to become more politically sophisticated the reason Whoa. that not one democrat would answer Whoa. that honestly i guess you can say Jim we're Webb not politically did. sophisticated no, because, Larry Elder. because well, what they're know, doing well, is they're playing to that i don't know what's, happen. don't know what's happened to you may, may I, you wrote may, may well, I, you wrote may a I, brilliant may, may book several years ago it was entitled enough it was a uh, brilliant you. book 
talking about these very same things. I don't know what's happened to you I since then. Said it You've was, gone back over to the other side. Maybe I can understand what, why what politicians behave as they do. I agree that they're right. pandering to that black uh, vote. But, but, but you know something, Larry? If that is, if Juan is right and that's pandering, that is the worst sort. Because if you don't have the courage to say every single solitary life matters, that makes you a political coward. Your reaction? You know, I, I, I didn't think it was a trick question. It seemed to me pretty easy to answer. And what's going on, of course, is the usual Democratic 101 bait and switch. They can't talk about the black economy. Under this president in the last six and a half years, the black net worth has declined 20 percent, the so-called wealth gap between blacks and whites has not been this wide in 25 years. The uh, labor force participation rate, the percentage of blacks who are working or looking for work, hasn't been this low in 40 years. Black home ownership down, black equity down. So let's talk about Black Lives Matter. Let's talk about climate change. Let's talk about any damn thing except the assault on the black economy and the assault on the, uh, on the black family as a result of these welfare state policies. Larry, it, all started, going on here. it all started under the Democrats. Is that right, Larry? I'm talking about exactly. the we net worth poverty. of blacks since Obama Lyndon has been in B. office Johnson. is down 20 percent. Larry, it's down 20 percent since Obama has been in office. Went through black teen, un teen unemployment up. Well, we're going to blame Bush black, now. Black poverty, black poverty, black poverty is up under under this president. Black net worth is down under this president. The net worth of everybody else is pretty much flatlined. The economy is hemorrhaged as a result of tax, spend, regulate, jacking up minimum wage, doing the very same things that damage the urban economy. To say nothing about uh, porous borders. We can go on and on and on about what's happened under this president that has made the black economy hemorrhage. Sheriff, jump in. It has been an economic and social disaster under this liberal ideology for black people over the last 50 years. And it started with the destruction of the family unit, the most basic unit of society that has been very right. successful, tore the black family apart. It has been a nightmare. Well, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more that we've got to pay more attention. If, if my feeling is black families matter. Let's, let's be very clear. But I just think that the two of you in focusing on all these other issues, it, you know, this plays into the all these black other lives issues. matters argument that anytime you say all lives matter, you're somehow undercutting attention to the real I issue have a of just police uh, violence have a second. in Sean, a black Sean, what, if, what if a group of people said, you know, to white lives matter or all lives matter? You know, I agree wait, with you. Wouldn't that be racist? No, all no, lives matter? No, if, somebody, the que if the question were, right. white lives matter or to all lives matter, and somebody says white, isn't that racist? No, but look, you know, you, you act as, there's no context here. There's a context sure, here that, that came out of police uh, action no, in the black question to have asked, a better question to have asked those Democrat candidates last night would have been, do babies' lives in the womb matter? That would have been a good question. Larry, if that question was asked so, about any other race, would it be considered racism? <laughs> Uh, of course it would. And I'll tell you something. Rahm Emanuel, the mayor of Chicago, has just conceded that because of the so-called Ferguson effect, the fact that officers are now pulling back because they're afraid of being called uh, police, being, being accused of police brutality and being accused of racial profiling, crime has gone up. And the victims are disproportionately black people, the very same people that this so-called Black Lives Matter movement claims right. to, that they care about. We yeah, and so I we, think that's why Black Lives Matter actually hurts themselves by not agreeing with you guys and saying no, all busy. lives matter and bring it together. I, well, I, that's why the political I say candidates, what are we arguing about? about? Their own movement. Then what are we, what are we arguing about? It's an ideology about? of victimhood with a list of grievances that do not exist. Thank you all for being with us. Welcome back to Chipped or Dipped, everyone. I hope everyone's been well. Hope you're doing good. Uh, things have been going really good here in Mexico. Uh, we're still uh, we're able to get out now, move around. Um, we got to see, we got to kind of sightsee a little bit with uh, our neighbors, who uh, we become really close with. Um, we we basically have uh, had a, had a good time. Now that uh, the pa pandemic is lifted, we're able to get outdoors, so we're having a good time checking out some of Morelia, Michoacan, Mexico. But um, anyway, uh, once again, I'm Jared Bryan. This is Chipped or Dipped. Welcome back. Chip meanings don't accept the mark of the beast in Revelations 13. Uh, it talks about uh, accepting the mark to be able to buy and sell. Um, and um, anyway, I just, um, I, I, I basically started this channel um, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, something like that. And um, God was leading me to put more effort into that than working. Um, 
I might go back to working here in the future. If we go back to Colorado, we're still kind of in prayer about where we're going next. But um, anyway, I just wanted to say that um, we're doing good here in Mexico. We are going to be um, trying to, I think this this week, uh, for the next three days coming up, um, we're going to go out to the cabanas and uh, go camping and uh, kind of hang out with the orphanage kids and all that. So we're, we're, doing, um, we're doing a few things here still before uh, we have to be back in the States, but we are very, very excited and um, we're happy that we have a ministry now that we know 100% of the funds can actually get to that ministry. Because when we were back in the States, a lot of times you would hear of different ministries taking a little bit off the top and different things like that. So we're happy to help out with the orphanage. And um, I posted a link recently on Facebook. I'm going to update it and put it on our um, YouTube channels. And uh, we're going to get that all situated. We've been doing a lot of different things lately. So sorry I haven't got too much content out to you. But I'm going to get you guys a few things that I put together that um, just kind of in my spirit... You know, there's a lot of people, you know, I was watching a few different things on social media, and I put a little compilation things together so you can check it out. But, um, you know, I was, you know, I know the the Black Lives Matter movement, I understand that, um, that there's people being led within that movement by wolves in sheep's clothing. Just like in the church, there there's people being led, the sheep are being led by wolves. So there's people that are, might be standing up for Black Lives Matter that actually are trying to have a movement to have change and stuff like that. But at the root, at the core of the belief system, there's some Marxism, there's some communism, there's a lot of different isms in here. Y'all got to be aware at some of the leadership that is, is taking place because, you know, you shouldn't be naive. You know, God winks, God winks for a time of ignorance, he says, but at some point you have to come to repentance. You have to realize, you have to realize, it talks about that in Acts. might be like Acts 17, I think. But, you know, only for a season he winks at ignorance. And I'm sure he winks at ignorance with a lot of these um, people who might be under false doctrine, that um, they might be trying to seek out the Lord and that's all they know. Um, But at some point you have to have eyes to hear, ears to hear eyes to see. So hopefully this all helps y'all. I'm not going to share too long of a message. Um, I, um, cause I have a lot of different content I've kind of put together and I just, I just did some, um, acrobatic stuff. You'll see, uh, probably if you haven't already seen it, yeah, you, I probably will start with it. So you've already seen it, I'm sure. But if not, look forward to it in the future. But anyway, um, there's, 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 um, a lady who, um, talked about her, the, she even mentioned that she, at the root cause of Black Lives Matter, is Marxism. And I think um, what, what, what that kind of says to me is you, you are not guarded. There's a lot of people who are unguarded right now, and they're not, they're not guarding their mouth. And it talks about that you'll be judged by every idle word that proceeds out of your mouth. And I just wanted to kind of share with you guys... The reasoning behind this message is because there's, there is a courtroom in heaven. And yes, our courtrooms here on this present, in this present darkness, in this world, in this corrupt, decaying, sinful world where we abort babies constantly and where the blood cries out, just like Cain and Abel. When, when Cain killed Abel, the blood cried out. That was one innocent blood that cried out. Think about all the innocent blood that cries out from the aborted babies. And then we take the aborted babies and the parts and the feet. that We, we take different parts of it and we um, now are concocting vaccines and injecting this kind of stuff into people. You know, we, I used to joke about this movie called Soil and Green is Made Out of People. And, you know, there were some skits on SNL that Phil Hartman did, and it was pretty funny. But now it's kind of real. There's people talking about, if you look at Hollywood, Holly Weird, they're talking about cannibalism in movies and stuff like that. It's just weird. And not to mention this whole mask mandate. You know, the, you, there's a lot of places that are kind of mandating you to to wear a mask and it's preparation to get you to be able to um, 
be forced to, to buy and sell a certain way. I think Uber just recently stated you can't ride an Uber if you don't have a mask on. So there's different things coming down the pipeline for people. And, um, you know, whether people are trying to protect their companies because it's their right, it's definitely their right to protect their, their, their companies. If they have interest in doing that and they think that people are going to be fearful of coming, I completely get that. But at some point you have to realize, look behind all this stuff. They're doing heat scans right now. They're doing, I, I, I went into a uh, Telcel, a phone company place in Mexico because we had to get a Mexico line because our phones are not doing good. I had to do, I had to go in there and they made me have my mask on, but they, I had to take my hat off. I don't understand, but you know, um, I, um, I listened to him cause he had some assault rifles, uh, both of the guys. So, I mean, it's, 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 um, it's a situation and I don't speak their language. So, um, there's things coming down the line and I'm trying to prepare people to the hour that we're in. Just like how I talk about in Matthew 24 all the time, how the, how the fruit tree, the fig tree, you know, is about to be ripe when, um, when, when it's about to be ripe. Jesus compared different things that are happening, the seasonings, the things that are happening um, in the current world that you're in. Um, that's, that's, it was indications. He's trying to prepare you all. So anyway, I just wanted to share this with you all. Um, there, is, there is agendas out there also. There's, there's things behind the scenes that, that companies, and um, they might not even be aware of, but there's some, just like I said, there's, in every level, in every system, there's wolves in sheep's clothing. So just like the, the political system, just like the religious system, just like um, just everything that in your, in your news media, they, they're leading you down a path. And um, it's not a good path. So anyway, I just wanted to, to let you know that the conditioning, the social conditioning that's being placed on uh, the people right now. And uh, just to know that the hour that you're in, And be careful right now because I used to joke around so much and I just joked around a little bit in this message to keep all the subscribers lighthearted and understand that, you know, I, I still joke. I still, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I still like to laugh and all that. Um, but I just want you to know the serious hour that we're in and you'll probably laugh at me after this video. But, um, anyway, I hope you all enjoy. Um, and let's go ahead and get in this. Uh, I already prayed over the message. So that seed is going to germinate in you and it's going to take root and, uh, it's going to blossom. So anyway, this is called the courtroom in heaven. Okay. Or you can call it idle words. I don't know what the title is going to be yet. Um, or you shall not pass. I'm not sure, but there's going to be a courtroom in heaven guys. And if you, if you don't believe me, we're going to go to Matthew twenty four fifteen real quick, okay? So, um, I thought I already had it marked. I guess I didn't. Matthew 24, verse 15 says, I know I always end up in Matthew. I love Matthew. But, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Um, oh, that's I, I had wrote that down, Matthew twenty four fifteen, um, because um, then it talks about. Um, so the um, fourteen says, "In this gospel, the kingdom shall, shall be preached unto the, all the world, for a witness unto all nations." That's it. Um, and then shall the end come. So this gospel. And right before that, he said in 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. This is 24. This is what I was talking about. You know, you'll you'll see it says wars and rumors of war. I mean, I've talked about this in multiple messages, but I wanted you to see this part in 14. It says, in this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So when that's preached in all the world, for a witness unto the nations, that means now you can be held accountable in a courtroom of law. If Jesus was trying a case and he was trying to help you, uh, oh, it says here you received, you, 
you had a chance to receive Jesus here, here, here. You know, there's going to be a courtroom in heaven at some point. And I know the courtrooms here are all uh, terrible. There's so many people bought and paid for. There's so many people that have sexual sins. And, and you know, there are people that are um, being bribed and extorted, I'm sure, in, in politics and and um, you know, even in law enforcement, there's a lot of law enforcement that are great law, that great police officers and stuff like that. But there's a lot of Freemasonry. If you look at the badges, and I mean, you've seen some of my messages. There's there's people at the top, wolves in sheep clothing. There's people. There's there's puppeteers, in every level and every different things. So anyway, um, and uh, you know, I I read I read um, I read this, and I'm like, well. Um, it basically, it basically, it it puts it cons- it puts something in your legal file. Let's say you have a legal file in heaven. It 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 puts something in that folder that says, okay, um, Jared Bryan was given a chance to accept Jesus Christ at this moment uh, on this time, and um, I can go to that um, when when my case is being tried in heaven. You know, it says Jesus will be yeah, the angels. Well, there, I think it says it uses reapers, but it's talking about the angels. It says um, they'll be separated into two groups. And I've talked about the sheep and the goats before. But all the nations will be separated. And then, then with each nation, it talks about there'll be she- separated sheep and goats. Jesus' sheep or Satan's goats. So, um, <clears throat> after that, it says... Um, um, so, every... Everything that you've said, everything you've done, if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've professed that out loud, that that word is is gonna be in your folder in heaven, in your in the courtroom of heaven. When your case is being tried, you professing Jesus or you singing loudly to Jesus and praising the Father, that's gonna be that's gonna be in your file, in your folder. And now they're talking about stopping the people from singing to the Lord. Oh, you can go to church now, they're saying, in California. But you can't sing. You can't praise the Lord. Oh, you can go riot. You can go You can do that. You don't have to wear a mask when you riot. You can go do all that. The masks, I think, were convenient for the rioters so people don't get caught. Um, I think that was set up. And I'll show you a few imagery that Hollywood does. Um, I recently watched the Joker um, to, because I, I know Heath Ledger um, had an amazing, like I, I'm a very big movie buff, but I don't watch a lot of movies because I don't like to watch worldly stuff, but I like to keep an eye on things that are going on in the world. So sometimes, occasionally, if I in my spirit think, oh, I need to watch something or I need to watch some parts of this or research something. So I watch The Joker because I know Joker is one of the most diabolical evil villains of all time. And I used to be a big comic book guy. And wouldn't you know that he started a revolution and they were wearing masks. And it said, I think in some of the the scenes it said, eat the rich. Um, Just like you'll see in in the world today. You know, if if you've heard about the movie The Purge, you know, I've seen the first one. And it's a very dark, demented movie. And I don't like to watch that stuff before I even started preaching I had start I had seen that and I understand the concept of it and I, I I watched a few snippets of different parts of the purge and you know different things just to get an idea of how Hollywood is leading the people right now there's a lot of cannibalism in Hollywood and in the in in the music uh, world um, like um, you yeah, know va- vampire stuff has always been you know that they they've tried to push that in movies and um, different um, recently in music videos and stuff like that. But anyway, so you there's going to be a courtroom in heaven, and um, you know the reason I was talking about the mask is because it just seems so convenient that everyone's wearing this clown mask and the Joker at the end scene, and they're burning down the cities and all that. And I was like, man, in my spirit, it's like I wonder if the people have are just being led. Are people just being led into this slaughter? So anyway, um, every idle word. You know, I used to be a big joker. I used to be the boy who cried wolf. I've given a message on this before, but this re came up in my spirit when I heard this girl talking about her ideals 
who was one of the founders and the leaders of BLM movement, of the Black Lives Matter movement. And I'm, my position is all lives matter, and uh, I think that this is um, a Marxist communist takeover from within by wolves in sheep clothing, and they're operating with under and this umbrella to have cover fire from everyone so they can be protected. Oh, you're racist if you say otherwise, or, you know, we can go, we can go do all this, but if you say against us, you're racist, you know. So I believe it's a cop-out a lot. Um, but uh, anyway, I just wanted to, um, to share that because idle words, you'll be judged. It says in Matthew 12, verse 36, since we're in, in Matthew, I'm just going to go there real quick. And then we'll go back to the last part about the courtroom that I wanted to share with you. And we'll end the message. I don't want to talk too long because i got a lot of content on here. So 12 verse 36 says, But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. So you're going to give account for every idle word. If your wife pisses you off and you you muddle, muddle something under your breath, you better repent of that real quick. I've done it before. If, if my daughter does something and it pisses me off, and I utter something, I need to repent. This happens. This is why you need to constantly re-ask the Lord, Father, I need to repent of these things. Sins known and unknown. I mean, you had uh, Job. He was practically perfect, and he even had to finally repent. Read Job if you ever want to really get something out of the Bible. But uh, anyway, uh, I will go into this. 37 also lines up with this. It says, For by thy words thou shalt be justified. So you're going to be justified. Your course will be just, justly done. It, you'll be justified by your words. Um, that's why you re- need to repent of all the words that you've said or uttered under your breath or you know muddled because you don't want to have any spot or blemish on you. You want to be covered by the blood of Jesus and be clear, white as wool, okay? So you, uh, white as snow. So you want to, you want to just, um, uh, it says, for the, by the words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So you'll either be justified or condemned by your words. This is powerful, gang. So I hope you guys are getting this. Um, I know it's a pretty quick message. We're going to go into 2 Corinthians real quick. Because I wanted to share that with you too. 2 Corinthians 5.10 It says, um, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So there's a judgment seat. That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, if you read for, uh, before all this, it's talking about more spiritual stuff and there's a lot of things in this in Corinthians that's why I believe it's more spiritual when he's talking about the things done in your body because where where the spirit you're supposed to worship God in spirit like I talked about when when I was talking about the woman at the well when Jesus was teaching her you're supposed to worship God in spirit um, there's you're not going to be worshiping in temples and buildings you're going to be worshiping them uh, within you because the temple is inside you so anyway, um, I hope that helps y'all. I hope y'all realize the hour that you're in. And um, right now, this is a season to be very careful with your words. And um, just know that uh, we love you. And I hope everything's going good. Um, where you at, wherever you guys are, stay in prayer. Stay covered by the blood of Jesus. Repent often. And um, don't get chipped. Go get dipped. God bless, guys.